Greetings, uh, everyone. It's uh, 9.55, and it's uh, time to start the session. Um, I'm Lee Rhodes. Uh, I'm with Verizon Media. Uh, I'm a uh, distinguished architect at Verizon Media. And uh, I started this project in um, about 2012. Uh, I was an architect on one of our big data systems at the time and uh, noticed that we were spending a huge amount of our uh, compute resources on solving um, some problems uh, like counting unique identifiers, for example. Uh, it was a very difficult problem and uh, consuming a lot of resources. So I, I started this project um, and was seeking better ways to solve this, uh, this fundamental problem. But it uh, turns out there are a lot of other similar problems that uh, we'll be discussing here. So what we have uh, developed, we went originally open source in 2015 and joined uh, Apache uh, last year. And um, uh, our project is growing and uh, we're really excited about it. So this is a production quality sketching library for the analysis of big data. All right, so there's... Uh, Three major topics I'm gonna to talk about. Um, the first is problematic queries of big data. Uh, and this is where traditional analysis methods don't work well. Uh, the second major topic is approximate analysis uh, using sketches <clears throat> and how using stochastic processes and probabilistic analysis uh, wins in a systems architecture context. And the third uh, topic uh, is I'll briefly uh, review the open source uh, Apache Data Sketches library. And uh, this is a unique library dedicated to production systems that process uh, big data. So the data analysis challenge, uh, this is just a, a template here, but um, it, generally in our data, we have billions and billions of rows uh, or key value pairs or uh, uh, billions of vectors in our data. And uh, we need to still analyze that. And uh, the big course, the big data problem is you can't store it all in memory. Uh, even large distributed systems aren't, aren't big enough to contain all the data at once. And so we need some means of analyzing um, this data quickly. <clears throat> Here are some uh, typical and very common queries we would like to apply to uh, our big data. Uh, unique identifiers is certainly one. Uh, we want to count uh, people or identifiers or maybe uh, uh, devices or, uh, or sources uh, of, uh, or maybe different uh, browsers or, or whatever. But we're counting unique instances of these uh, identifiers because there are many duplicates of these identifiers in our stream. Uh, of data or in the, the data set that we want to analyze. But we not only would like to count uh, just uh, one stream, but we would like to be able to apply this to multiple different streams and do set operations on those streams. So when we view the set of unique identifiers in, in set A, we'd like to do a union with B or an intersection uh, with a C union D and uh, then excluding um, all the identifiers from set E, for instance, and just using set expressions. Um, <clears throat> so that's a very powerful capability in analysis. Um, the second kind of uh, and queries that are very common is quantiles, uh, where we want to say, what is the 95th percentile um, of some data stream, or what's the median? What's the 10th percentile? Uh, from these quantile numbers, we can get an idea of what the, our distribution of data really, really looks like. Um, this is very closely related to the next uh, little uh, icon on the right, which is histograms and prob probably what we call probability mass functions, where you want to see actually the shape of the distribution um, 
um, in, and be able to compute that uh, in real time or certainly as a stream. Uh, the next one on the, on the lower left is uh, frequent items. So we may have uh, many occurrences of, of something, but we want to find out what, what is the most popular. Um, if you are selling tunes uh, um, on your website, we, you may want to say, okay, uh, within the last hour, what are the most frequently occurring uh, tunes uh, that then you can adjust your advertising or adjust your uh, priorities based on what's popular or most frequent um, for the moment. Um, another kind of operations that are uh, also applicable for uh, approximate analysis is vector and matrix operations. Singular value decomposition uh, is also a very uh, key process for anal analyzing our data. Graph analysis, we all live in networks and um, of various types and we want to be able to understand the structure um, and uh, density of the networks at, at various times. And other kinds of um, analysis where we want to do sampling and either weighted probabilistic sampling or uniform sampling of our data and do that in a very efficient way uh, and uh, in a streaming way. Now, when the data gets large <clears throat> or your resources uh, are, are limited, all of these queries become problematic because the aggregations are non-additive. And that is a particular quality of these aggregations. You can't take some result from a group A and a result from a group B and combine those results in a linear fashion. Um, and similarly, you may have some current result and you want to add no, uh, one new item to it. Um, you can't uh, update that, that result easily and obtain the correct answer. And this is due to the non-additive uh, property of all the queries I discussed uh, on the previous page. <clears throat> so the traditional approach uh, or exact analysis methods uh, for all these different types of queries uh, require local copies. Um, and what I mean by local is uh, suppose your big data exists on, on the cloud somewhere and uh, or even if it's all on disk um, and your query engine wants to be able to analyze um, any of these uh, queries, whether it's quantile analysis or it's uh, uh, most frequent or heavy hitter analysis or, or unique uh, items analysis, uh, it has to copy all this data into memory or into the local system for processing. And it often requires sorting of that data, which is very, very slow. Um, th this is a very difficult process and very um, uh, time consuming. Um, now, I, I want to make sure we don't confuse the kind of streaming we're talking about here with streaming platforms, um, because streaming platforms really are, are mostly micro batch systems. They uh, don't, uh, you, it doesn't solve this fundamental problem of uh, non nonlinear uh, addition of these various quant quantities. Parallelization doesn't help much either. Uh, you can throw a lot of resources at this problem, but you still need local copies of all your data. And uh, you end up with brute force analysis in each of the different partitions you set up. So you may be throwing a thousand times the resources at it and getting uh, a very, very little benefit from it. Uh, in terms of exact analysis. Traditional time, uh, time, time windowing. This is a very popular uh, and common analysis method where you want to look at a window of time uh, going back days, uh, or it could be minutes, or it could be hours. Uh, but you want to say analyze uh, in, this, in this picture, uh, have a three-day window. And using traditional analysis, it, you end up touching every data item uh, three times, uh, or in the case of a uh, window of length in, you end up processing your data in times, which is exorbitantly expensive uh, when processing these uh, data using uh, traditional methods. <clears throat> so one of the fundamental challenges or, or, or fundamental premise, I should say, as that we want to challenge is that uh, our results must be exact. Um, if we allow for some approximation along with some accuracy guarantees, 
we can achieve orders of magnitude improvement in speed and reduction of resources. This is the fundamental premise of uh, our technology here. So I want to introduce the concept of a sketch. Uh, it's the common name uh, for a set of uh, technologies known as stochastic streaming alg algorithms. And we model the problem as a stochastic process and analyze uh, uh, using probability and statistics. And these sketches have uh, roughly four major components to them. It has a stream processor at the front end that takes the stream of, of items coming in. Uh, those could be a live stream or it could be off of a disk or, or whatever. And it um, uses stochastic and random processes uh, in the uh, selection or, or examination of that stream. And in that process, then it keeps some elements or aspects of the data in a data structure, very specialized data structure. Um, and then uh, this data structure can be queried uh, at any time during the streaming process or later after the uh, sketch has been built. You can uh, query the, uh, the sketch and obtain uh, results. And the results you get, of course, have some uh, probabilistic uh, distribution of error about it, but it's generally uh, pretty small. The fourth um, element that is very important in, in all these uh, sketches is what we call mergeability, where the, the stream coming in is a stream of sketches, actually, uh, completed uh, uh, sketches that have been analyzed before, and you're able to merge these together in a linear fashion. And so now the result sketch that comes from this process is um, the same as if you had uh, merged all the data um, into one stream and into a single sketch. And so you don't lose any accuracy, um, particularly for union type merge operations uh, in this process. <coughs> so, <coughs> We want to ask how and why sketches achieve this superior performance for systems processing this massive data. So the key properties uh, of these sketches is they have small stored size. Uh, that is, they're small, certainly compared to the original uh, big data that you're looking at. Uh, and sm by small, it varies a lot. But small, small can be from uh, hundreds of bytes to kilobytes. Uh, to megabytes, but compared to the terabytes or petabytes of your big data, that's still quite small. The other key property is that they're sublinear in space. And, and what that means is that as the stream size grows, as shown in this little diagram, that the sketch size uh, does not grow even proportionally, it grows uh, when in a sublinear fashion, and sometimes even uh, comes to a limit and doesn't grow anymore. So it's, it, uh, it grows very slowly and it's small to start with. Uh, these are, by definition, this is a, these are streaming algorithms, so they're single pass. They touch the data only once and, um, and then never look at it again. Uh, data insensitivity is very important. Um, you don't want to depend on the order of the data um, so that um, you, you get basically the same answer no matter how the the data is presented to the sketch. And ideally, you, you really don't need to know much about the data at all, what the min, the max, or, or uh, data range, and that sort of thing. Uh, probably one of the most important properties uh, of sketches is that they're mergeable. Uh, and <clears throat> the mergeability allows us to uh, process uh, our data in an embarrassingly parallel way. They are, by definition, approximate and probabilistic. And one of the keys to the sketches that we have in our library is that they're all mathematically proven uh, in terms of their error properties. Now, you might ask, how is that different from sampling? Well, it's, it's similar in some ways. Uh, sketches overlap uh, with sampling. There are some sampling algorithms that are also sketching, but they're also sketching algorithms that are not at all sampling. And so it, it, uh, the determination is based on the specific sketch. The first win, uh, of course, with sketching is that this, we have a very small uh, stored space, um, small amount of memory requirements. So they start small, sublinear means they stay small, 
and the single pass simplifies processing. So now instead of all this big data that you have to store into your, uh, pull into your query engine, the sketch is orders of magnitude smaller. Um, and because it is much smaller, that means you can, it can process itself much faster um, uh, because the, the less data it has in it, the more, the faster it can process the data. The second major win uh, for sketches is mergeability. And this enables parallelism with no additional loss of accuracy. And the sketches transform these non-additive metrics into additive objects. <clears throat> and the result of a sketch merge is yet another sketch. And that enables set expressions for selected sketches. The next couple of wins is uh, near real-time query speed. So um, now if you can have a, a back-end system that, that produces your sketches, say like on a Hoop, Hadoop uh, infrastructure, uh, produces the sketches uh, offline, then those can be stored into a data mart or hypercube database uh, where the sketches are small enough to be stored as elements in a row of a database. Now the query, um, then query process then chooses the appropriate rows and dimensions uh, that you're interest, it, interested in for that query, then merges them into the result sketch and produces the result. And this allows uh, sub-second um, analysis of, um, of queries and, and achieve near real-time uh, analysis. The uh, time windowing becomes vastly simpler now um, and it includes late data processing. So uh, the data is only touched once uh, in, this, uh, in this diagram. And if any data comes in late, it can be very easily merged into the appropriate uh, time window in real time. And uh, then the sketches, uh, uh, once, a, once a day is finished or an hour is finished or a minute is finished, it can then, the same sketch can roll back to the beginning of the window and be uh, reused for the next, uh, for the next cycle. <clears throat> uh, this is actually a, a case study. Uh, one of our internal systems was called uh, Flurry. Um, and um, here, uh, the, the internal architecture of this allowed real-time analysis, uh, and it was uh, achieved this way, where you, in the top diagram, you have a continuous stream from our edge web servers of data streaming in uh, through a storm process, which the storm um, server basically did this partitioning uh, into different dimensions. And those, those were fed into a Druid uh, system uh, where the sketches were built with a 48 hour history and these sketches had one minute resolution. And um, then the, uh, it was able to update queries about uh, every 15 seconds. So, so the, the freshness of the data was in 15 seconds of uh, real time. And, and then for longer term um, storage and analysis, uh, we had Hadoop uh, with Hive and Pig in the back, back end that uh, allowed the query process to merge in history as old as hours, days, or weeks, or months. Uh, so they're literally the user a, uh, interface was able to see data that was as fresh as, as a few seconds all the way uh, to hours and months. Um, <clears throat> uh, the next uh, major win was the lower system cost. So, uh, we had the chance, since we did this redesign uh, in-house, uh, we had the chance to analyze the overall system cost in terms of uh, virtual core seconds. And so this is a reflective of the, of the actual hardware costs. Um, and before sketches, it was, uh, we, it consumed about 80 billion virtual core seconds uh, per month. And this is by the way, for all the processing, not just the uh, analysis that was used by sketching, but for everything. And after sketches, it, it reduced the entire system cost down to 20, 20 billion virtual core seconds. That's about one fourth the hardware costs uh, and investment. Um, so it's something, something to think about uh, as, as an incentive. <clears throat> so the data sketches library, uh, I'm gonna talk about here for a moment. <clears throat> 
Uh, our mission is to combine uh, uh, deep science with exceptional engineering to produce production quality sketches that can address these difficult queries. And these can be integrated in many different types of uh, systems. Our, our team is a combination of, of scientists, uh, theoretical and academics uh, uh, around the world that are very interested in this set of problems and uh, work with the engineers uh, to develop this library. And you'll, you'll see that they are, uh, um, some, of the, some of these scientists are the leading scientists in the theoretical analysis of uh, streaming algorithms. <clears throat> The library uh, is divided into a number of uh, different families of sketches. We have uh, a number of four subfamilies in cardinality. The famous uh, hyperlog log sketch is uh, implemented with it's an excellent implementation in our library. We've uh, developed some of our own sketches. The CP sketch actually beats the hyperlog log in terms of accuracy per stored space. And we have the very popular theta sketches and tuple sketches which uh, enables set expressions. Um, then we have our uh, quantile sketches. Uh, we have three families, uh, uh, tra traditional quantiles and a uh, leading, uh, probably the best known, uh, best uh, performing sketch in terms of quantile analysis is KLL. And uh, we have a, a new sketch, which I'm talking about in a, in a minute, is a relative error quantile sketch to be released soon. Uh, we have frequent items, heavy hitter sketches um, that um, are also very popular, and the frequent direction sketch, uh, which is very useful in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, sampling, we have a number of sampling sketches, Reservoir and the VARUP sketch, which is developed by uh, Edith Cohen um, at, uh, at Google. And we have a number of specialty sketches for uh, doing customer engagement, uh, uh, frequent dis distinct tuples, HLL maps, and so on. Um, all of our sketches are, are developed in both Java and C++ and accessible from Python. And we have binary compatibility across languages and cross systems. So you can develop um, a sketch in C++ and then uh, also be able to read it and, and merge and do all the operations in Java as well and back and forth. <clears throat> so here's a little uh, peek at our new relative error, error quantile sketch. And this will take me a minute to explain. Um, uh, on the left is the KLL float sketch. It's a um, probably the uh, most powerful quantile sketch to date um, that has been published. It was published a couple of years ago. And uh, what I'm showing here is the error analysis uh, over the ranks. And so if you're looking at, the, say, the 50th percentile that would be in the middle, the 90th percentile is what we call the 0.9 uh, rank of your data. And uh, the error is on the left. Uh, and you see it's pretty flat. So uh, these represent standard deviations uh, in the error distribution. So between the red curve and the blue curve represents uh, 95% confidence and between the, the brown curve and the purple curve represents 99% uh, confidence. And you can see it's flat over the range, over the range of ranks. So it doesn't matter whether you're asking for the 10th percentile or the 99th percentile, basically the error, uh, rank error is about the same. The new sketch though, uh, solves a, a, a problem that uh, we've heard quite a bit about where users are saying, okay, well, uh, this is about 1%, uh, the one on the left is 1% accurate. They say, well, I need a much more accuracy, but I only care about the 99th or the 99.99% quantiles. Uh, so we've developed this, what's called the relative error quantile sketch. So you can configure the sketch so that the high end, you get extremely high accuracy all the way down to exact so that... Um, uh, for instance, you ask for the 99th, uh, for instance, the, I'm sorry, the, the 90th percentile, and you can see it's a four, tenth, four tenths of a percent. At the 99.9%, uh, it's, it's uh, extremely accurate uh, down, and you can also switch it, uh, switch it for the low end. So this is for those cases where you really don't care about the error at the low end uh, of your ranks. You only care about, say, the 99 or 99.99%. .99%. Uh, 
percentiles. Uh, this is common in a lot of systems uh, metric uh, analysis. There's a bright future for sketching technology and solutions, which we show here in red is uh, um, areas where we've addressed uh, sketching already, uh, like in count distinct frequent items, heavy hitters, quantile ranks, set operations, sampling, and so on. But there are other, other areas where um, we're uh, still waiting for some contributions um, in conductivity, cut sparsification of graphs, covariance estimation, uh, low rank approximation, sparsification, clustering, k-means, k-median. Uh, these are all areas that we're looking at for the future. Um, and a lot of these will be very interesting for uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. Thank you. Uh, we want to invite uh, open invitation to collaboration in our project. And you can visit us at datasketches.apache.org. Okay, so I guess I'm open for some questions. Okay. <clears throat> Does the distribution of the data affect the error on the upper percentiles with that new sketch? No. Uh, by, um, all right, so let, let, let me clarify what you mean by distribution. Um, you'll have some distribution. Um, and if you're looking at the rank distribution, um, then certainly uh, with a new sketch, you're interested in say the uh, most, you want the most accuracy at the high end of your rank distribution, then yeah, that will, that, that will be far more accurate. But in terms of how the data is, is um, um, actually, other than that, uh, it doesn't really depend on how the air is how the data is distributed. Um, okay, any any other questions? Oh, some other uh, some other news. We're developing a Docker uh, container application. Um, am interested in getting some feedback on that. So th this Docker could be virtually installed anywhere and uh, you'll be able to um, uh, use any, any of the sketches. Now, uh, this Docker implication, of course, uh, won't be anywhere near as efficient as where this library is integrated into a system, but it, uh, it makes it very easy to uh, do experiments with your data and see uh, how useful it would be. Yes, there are mathematical proofs. Um, if you look at the library, there's a, uh, a research tab uh, that you can uh, go through and all the uh, um, different uh, research papers that we uh, leverage are on that page. Um, okay. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the, we're hoping that the container um, on the next month or so, uh, we hope to have the container um, implementation available. Um, we're, we're working on that right now. Any other feedback about interest in the container? What data for, does it? Uh, what data format does the library take data as input? Uh, okay, so if you're using the library itself, um, either in, in all right. So this is complicated. In in Java, we have, um, for example, our our uh, distinct counting sketches take uh, strings, uh, ints, floats, doubles. Uh, longs, all, all the di various different primitive types. Um, 
because it is uh, establishing, it needs to establish a uniqueness um, and it, it then hashes that input. Um, we also, some of the libraries have what we call, they're, they're um, uh, generic in their implementation, both in C++ and in Java, so that you can have uh, abstract objects as long as you can either produce a hash of it and identify you, in terms of quantiles, you have the ability to compare um, two items together. Then otherwise we don't care what, what the object is. Um, so it can be all, all different types in terms of data input. Now in the container, more than likely um, we'll be standardizing on strings and um, just to make it uh, just just to make it simple, yes, okay, uh, data format. I, I suggest you go and look at our website, and uh, it becomes clearer. I think what the different data types are. Uh, any other questions? Um, we have a uh, we have different um, uh, ways of communicating with us. We have a Slack channel. We also have, uh, of course, our um, Apache mailing lists. Uh, please uh, check in with us um, uh, to learn, uh, and uh, we're eager eager to meet with you and talk with you. I'm not sure when this session was supposed to end here. Oh, going back, to, I don't know if Chris is still on. Uh, he was asking about, uh, the, we don't assume any distribution of the input input data, it does not have to be normally distributed. Uh, it's just that the properties of the sketches are that the error, pro the properties of error are uh, tend to be normally distributed for most, most of the sketches, but it has nothing to do with the distribution of the data itself. <clears throat> oh, Dan, uh, you might a uh, number of databases that have adopted the library for doing query optimization. Um, so, I, uh, yes, uh, in fact, the query optimization is a, a, a one of the major uses of uh, this kind of a library.
In fact, we have one of our database um, customers has, um, they use uh, all three, three of the major families. They use uh, unique, uh, you know, uh, unique analysis as well as most frequent occurrences as well as quantiles. They use, they take their data and apply all sketches at the same time uh, for uh, query optimization. Uh, Samuel, I'm not sure I understand. Can I change the theta sketch if I have a mapping to, between old IDs and new IDs? Uh, if your ID changes, I, then you're talking, it, as far as the sketch is concerned, concerned, it is a different, unique identity. So I don't think that will work um, if I understand the question. In other words, your, your data has to have a, uh, an identity is an identity. And uh, if that changes, then it treats it as if it were a separate unique object. Um, Samuel, I presume you are familiar with the library if you're already using Theta Sketches? So. Excellent. I'm not familiar with um, Iceberg, but Yeah, I can't help you, Samuel, in terms of if you have to change the ID, uh, you basically have to regenerate your sketches. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, I see, but I'm not familiar with Iceberg. I suggest uh, all of you uh, uh, come and talk to us uh, either on Slack or on uh, in our users group, uh, users uh, mail list. Okay, I think I uh, am running in the next talk, so I have to leave. Thank you. Um, thank you, folks. <clears throat>